Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. But uh, hold on a sec, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this looks a little bit like iMovie. Uh, so it could still be Final Cut Pro 10 because I know that was one of the criticisms it received. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Today we're going to be looking at importing or exporting, however you want to look at it. We're basically going to be sending an iMovie project into Final Cut Pro 10. Now you might be thinking, when's this ever going to be of use? Now, let me just give you a scenario. You're on set, you're getting lots of footage, and you need to make a quick mock-up of some of the footage you've got into a small little sequence um, that your director might be working on, or one of the producers, because the editor, uh, nine times out of ten, won't be on set. So this will mean the director or producers could or even the cinematographer could knock something together to show the producers or to give to the editor as saying this is sort of what we've been working out today whilst we were filming. So you cut together something very quickly on iMovie um, and then you can send it to the editor to actually start refining and working on the finished sequence. So let's just take a quick look at what we've got. Now, if I'm honest, this is probably one of the most one of my most favourite films I've ever made, um, and I'm considering entering it into some of the film festivals. Um, now, if we take a look at what we've got, so we've got we can see we've got some transitions, we've got some music, we've got a still photo with some animation on it. This picture has had colour correction, so as this one, you can see the whites have been extremely uh, blown out. You can see the exposure is set to 156. Um, and then we've just got some nice shots, this was all filmed on the iPad apart from this picture which was taken, I don't know what by um, but I just wanted to sh give you an example of a mixed format timeline and then we also have some text and then a fade out at the end so let's see how um, Final Cut's going to deal with all of this you can see this project pertains to the uh, iPad Outdoors video day one and possibly some of the day two um, if you're wondering how I got iMovie to look like this and the uh, project isn't up here then there's a very clever little button that switches them over but I prefer to work in a linear fashion if that makes sense okay so let's jump over to Final Cut Pro 10 and let's go to file import iMovie project you can see it takes us straight to the uh, according folder so we can choose iPad Vandergarden which is the name of the project that I just created or that I was just working on and you can see rather efficiently Final Cut has imported a lot of these clips let's just have a look so we can see that this clip which was a blur it's kept the blur you can see this looks overexposed so if we go into the inspector let's see if it's done anything to the uh, colour you can see that the color has actually stayed the same so what they actually give you is this iMovie option um, where you can see that under color there's a button that says iMovie on so that's basically telling Final Cut to keep any corrections that were made in iMovie If we check that off it's going to get rid of any corrections but you can't go in and refine the adjustments you were already making this clip again you can see the white balance is, uh, is off but if we get rid of that um, then that undoes what was done in iMovie but we can't refine it so we've got our fade from black we've got our cross blur we've got our music remember in the timeline another one of our blurs our text which if we hop back over into iMovie looks pretty pretty spot on the, uh, the font sizes are a bit off the actual font is fine but the formatting of the line underneath is uh, is wrong, um, so you can see that's that's an error that we might get. If we just select the bottom layer, then obviously it's very quickly just to uh, 
go in and change that back. But for the most part, it's good. And often, with the uh, scenario that I gave you guys about mocking up a sequence, then titles will be less important. Um, because you'd often have a motion graphics artist or some kind of titler that will uh, go through and add the titles anyway. Um, so that's looking pretty good. So one thing you might have noticed is the uh, movement on the picture. Now Final Cut uh, simply translates that under the uh, sorry the uh, crop as a Ken Burns effect. So we can just change that back to trim if we want to just treat it as a normal picture as it as it would be if you just dragged it into the Final Cut timeline. But we've, if we undo that, then it's going to retain that effect that we gave it earlier. And you can see from inside of here, we can obviously do some final cut things. We could add some stabilization to these clips. And then final cut is going to go through, well, in the background, go through and transcode or analyze these clips and work out what the dominant motion is. And then we can, you can see, we can start to make the most of some of the Final Cut Pro 10 tools um, and some of the filters as well that they come with. We grab this. Now it's a menacing duck with the Ken Burns effect, which is pretty cool. Um, we can add a vignette. nice and cool. And one of the things that's admirable about the uh, iPad camera is that you get very shallow depth of fields if you work it right. Um, so you can get some really nice looking images. Um, in this video let's just add a bit of colour. Make the most of this colour board which we don't have um, in uh, Final Cut, oh, sorry, in iMovie. Let's go in and add some warmth to this clip. Add some to this clip. But then let's put some of the blues back into the sky. Magical. You can see it's just finishing up with the dominant motion. Once the dominant motion's done, then it will obviously play back with the dominant motion and be fine without having rendered the color correction just to play back. One of the things to bear in mind is obviously now we can play around more with the audio as well, which we won't have been able to have done in iMovie to the extent that we can here. Uh, we have far greater control of uh, audio correction, ETC, etc. So let's play back this last clip, which has now been stabilized. Final Cut made a hash of that. What we'll do is we'll go into the settings. Show. Just drop some of these. Maybe this clip was just never meant to be stabilised. This clip, however, looks far more promising. And then that clip needs doing as well. But as you can see, very straightforward, very simple. Um, hopefully this was useful. Now you can tell your uh, set people just to knock up something in iMovie to give you something to start working from as an editor. Um, and hopefully speed up your post-production workflow. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon with a brand new tutorial. Or short film. I've got something very exciting to talk about very soon, so I look forward to sharing that with you guys.